Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very, very, very special guest today. We have Dr. Lise, and she's just an amazing woman with an amazing story to share, and she has a ton of knowledge that she's going to dish out to you to the, in today's podcast. But I'm going to keep my mouth shut, and I'm going to let her tell you all the good infos and goodies so, you know, so Lise, Dr. Lise, can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yes. Um, my background, I was a holistic chiropractor and I did lots of mind body work. Um, but now I'm a full time coach since 2003. And the main reason I became a full time coach is because as a chiropractor, I saw how if my patients were happy, they didn't get sick as often. And if they got sick, they were able to heal a lot faster and that sent me on a quest to really go for understanding you know what makes people happy and then <laughs> to top it off in 1988 uh, my father was diagnosed with terminal cancer he was given nine months to live and that was three weeks before my sister's wedding a week after my sister's wedding my 21 year old brother died in a car accident and then Within a month of all this, my eight year relationship, the man I thought I was gonna marry ended. And it was like, ow, ow, ow. And, mm -hmm. and to survive the pain, it sent me on the quest to understand what does it take to live an amazing life? Because it's not if these challenges are gonna to happen to us, it's when they happen, how, how do you live? How do you actually learn to use the challenges in your life and look at them as they're not happening to you, but for you? Yeah. Because gratitude is the biggest factor in healing your life. If you can be grateful for even the most challenging moment of your life, you transform yourself, you gain love, you gain wisdom, and now you can, you, you're not stuck anymore. You, you get unstuck. Gratitude is the way to get unstuck and to take you on an amazing ride where I call that creating heaven on earth. That's that's what I love doing for my clients, creating heaven on earth. I love that. You know, I know that you, you were originally a chiropractor and then you became a coach. Um, you know, that's a, a vast change in careers. You know, what really provoked you to become a coach and leave your, the, the world of chiropractic? Well, it's actually a spiritual experience that happened to me. I, I was in a seminar that I now teach and call it extreme freedom, which that's based on this work from Dr. John DeMartini, who's also a chiropractor. And I was doing this exercise where you open your heart and I had been really angry with my father, like so very angry with him. And as I did the experience, I, my heart started to open. And then my heart opened up so wide. And I can tell you from my own experience, if you, if you go into an extreme case of gratitude, you get into a state of grace. Yes. And when you read about near-death experiences, that's basically what I got to see because I was in this altered space where I was just like in this white light and I was shown without words that everything that happened everything that is happening everything that will ever happen to us is for us to grow in love and wisdom and I was in this amazing beautiful loving place I was like oh and then I came back down to you know the regular everyday life and right. so my quest has been since that moment to give this experience of transformation to my clients, but also for me so that I can stay in that state. And I can guarantee you, if you start on this journey, you will experience more and more moments of gratitude where you definitely feel like you're living heaven on earth. You don't have to die to experience heaven on earth. You can actually experience heaven on earth when you are grateful and every time we are ungrateful we experience hell on earth hell yes. on earth ungrateful <laughs> heaven on earth being grateful so the key is to learn to grow from what i call stage one hell on earth 
to stage two, heaven on earth. And I also call stage one, the boot camp. Yeah. And I created an analogy. Like I've literally worked with my clients, like thousands of people one-on-one. -on -one. So after a while, you're pretty thick if you don't start seeing patterns. So I was able with time to see like, to help my clients, what I had to do is get them out of stage one, the, I call now the boot camp into stage two. Now I, I created a metaphor and the metaphor is there are three types of boot camps. Some people were born into a musical boot camp where life was easy breezy. Mm -hmm. The problem, it was too easy. When they graduate from there, their wings that are not strong enough. They're not able to face challenges and little things make them crumble. And then they have to go through that journey because nobody escaped challenges. So they have to learn how to make themselves stronger. Then there are people who are born into what I call the athletic boot camp. So if you do sports, you win, you lose, you learn to have happiness and face yourself, you still, create a whole bunch of experiences that make you feel like something must be wrong with me for this to have happened, which is not true. And then I have my special clients. Those are really amazing clients. The people who were born with what I call the Navy SEAL boot camp. <laughs> and if you survive Hell Week, where you don't sleep for a whole week, you graduate a superhero. So people who, who were born into a boot camp, a family or circumstances that felt like, oh my goodness, I'm surviving the Navy SEAL boot camp. They are amazingly powerful, strong people, except because they faced bigger challenges, they created the illusion that something was really wrong with them, which is not true. Mm -hmm. and, and the way I look at it spiritually is that Wherever you were incarnated and wherever you were born into, it was not a mistake. Mm -hmm. You needed to be born exactly into that boot camp. And you can see your boot camp as a driver because out of these drive, these places, these circumstances, it gives you interest. It gives you a network of people you connect with. It gives you talents. It gives you parts of your personality. All of these things come from that. And the, the, the most important thing to remember is that nothing is wrong with you for having been to a different boot camp. Right. My belief is that the essence of each and every one of us is love. Yeah. So each and every one of us is worthy of love. Yes. And once we come from that place, since I'm worthy of love, how am I going to use this challenge to my benefit? And you are a beautiful example of that. Look, look how, how you transcended what happened to you. Now you are touching the life of millions of people. And I'm doing the same things with what happened with me. And so every single listener right now, no matter what's happened to you, if you can start from the place of, since I'm worthy of love, why would my higher self, God, the universe, whatever you like to call it, mm -hmm. how did I choose this boot camp? <laughs> what was I supposed to be driven to do? And what would have been the drawbacks also if I had not been born into this boot camp? Yeah. Because then it leads you to gratitude. And when you go into gratitude, now you transform your life. And then you can use everything you've learned in your boot camp. You gotta leave the boot camp at some point. You know, a boot camp is a boot camp. You're not supposed to be stay there for the rest of your life. Then right. you start to consciously create your stage two, your heaven on earth, by benefiting from everything that you've learned in your boot camp. Mm -hmm. And then also doing the conscious and subconscious work to let go of any illusion that something must have been wrong with you for this to happen. And as and that's where I created the heart freedom method, which is a method that allows you, me, in 10 minutes to find a moment where you created a story that's now holding you back. So in 10 minutes, you, you find one story, you let it go, and now you can benefit from fully focusing on your stage to creating heaven on earth. And the image that I have when I work with my clients or teach my clients how to do this, because I have an online program where I teach people how to do this, is like 
Imagine your essence is love. So your essence is beautiful white light. Mm -hmm. And whenever we face a challenge, usually as a kid, we go, what's wrong with me for this to be happening? So imagine you got a bunch of duct tape <laughs> on top of your light. And every time you do this work, you peel away one piece of duct tape. So every time you do the work, you just get more and more in love with who you are, what you do and what you have. And by doing this, you can benefit the world even more. So in a nutshell, that's that's the work that I do with my clients. I help them gain gratitude for even the most challenging um, events of their lives. I find that a lot of times, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of people, when things happen in their life, they become very negative. But if you take things that happen in your life, the obstacles that occur in our lives, and you not look at the 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 negative, but you you take you take the positive out of that 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 instant that episode of your life, and what did I learn from it? How did it make me a better person? What did I get out of it? I think that that helps you gain strength, appreciation, and a lot of knowledge, so you can move forward. And you can learn from it, and then even help others because it 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 builds. It's like a building block, and it and it defines you after after going through obstacles. It you learn from it. You and it's a, it could actually be a good thing. You know, how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm one hundred percent with you. I, I use a metaphor, and I even like using it with little kids. Little kids love it, and adults love it too. It's like. You know, it's the story of the butterfly in the cocoon. The scientist was observing a butterfly coming out of a, of a cocoon and it's a huge struggle. It takes hours and hours and hours. So to be nice to the butterfly, it cuts the cocoon open. But by doing this, the butterfly has nothing to struggle against. So the wings are weak, it can never fly and it dies that way. So once we start looking at events, no matter how challenging they were, because I know some people have gone through tremendous challenges. Like for me, for example, I had a twin that died beside me in utero. Mm. So I became a healer. Do you think it's a coincidence? Right. It's like at the subconscious level, I was always driven to want to save others. Yes. So once you start looking and we don't have a choice because the source of human suffering is the, the search for pleasure without challenges. The source yeah. of human suffering is the search for pleasure without challenges. Mm -hmm. So once we, if you're smart, so if you know this, if you're smart, if you're above average human being, when you face a challenge, instead of going flat like a pancake, you're gonna say, all right, how am I gonna use this to my advantage? Mm -hmm. Now you can grow, you can transcend, you don't stay stuck. Now you can move forward. That's right. actually the name of my book coming out with Jack Canfield is called Unstuck. Because the way to get unstuck is to find the event in the boot camp and go yeah. and dissolve the illusion that was created by this story you created. Because is a baby worthy of love? Is a toddler in the terrible twos worthy of love? Mm -hmm. The teenager worthy of love? Mm -hmm. Like, at what point did we stop being worthy of love? Right. We only stop being worthy of love when we decided something must have been wrong with me for me to experience this challenge, which is yeah. not true. It was just a boot camp. And yeah. so, yeah, with what you're saying, you know, if you can meet an 80-year-old person that still loves life and is grateful, listen to them. Because yeah. it is impossible to get to 80 years old not having faced challenges. And if they can transcend those challenges and still be inspired, hang around them. Yes. Because those people are the real deal. Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. I find that a lot of times when I, when I look for guidance, I always look at people who are older and wiser that have gone through it and they have learned from it. And those people who excel in life and they have gone through similar experiences, obviously they knew what they were doing or they made the right choices. So look at them and find what did they do to get through these similar experiences that I am now experiencing myself and use them as a 
so to speak, mentor, you know, a guidance to help. And, you know, I also find when you mention gratitude, I find gratitude is so important. And, you know, gratitude and kindness is, is two things that you always must have in your life. Now, for you know, a lot of times people lack gratitude and they don't realize what they have sometimes until it's taken away from them. And sometimes the simplest things in life could be worth so much. You don't realize until it's taken away. What's your, you know, intake on that? Yeah, you know, I uh, I went to one of the biggest Halloween Hollywood star. I went to their place. I worked with his family. And I can tell you, you can have millions of fans, private jets, chef, you know, people adoring you. And if you're not grateful, you don't have anything. Right. Like if you're a parent right now listening to this, teach your kids to be grateful. Be grateful yes. for the smallest little thing that happened. Like I had a patient when I was a chiropractor and she had MS, multiple sclerosis. And when she first started to come and see me, she was dragging her feet because she didn't have the power to do this. Yeah. And so I recommended that she started to do a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I hate you because I have to try to find these moments. And then a week later, you know, because I have to find these things that I'm supposed to be grateful for, now I'm looking for them. Then after a while, she started to be finding, and guess what? When she came to see me after a month, she was not driving her feet anymore. She had more energy. Wow. So that's the power of gratitude. That's the power of being grateful. Gratitude heals you. Mm -hmm. And gratitude destroys you. Gratitude mm -hmm. heals you and gratitude heals you. I, I created um, a resource, it's a free resource, it's called bestfriendjournal.com, mm -hmm. you go bestfriendjournal.com, you can download it, and it, you learn to be grateful for who you are, to become your best friend, because once you do this, you increase your vitality, you increase your joy, you, you become your best friend, because ultimately, you know, truly, we are alone. Like when you graduate from planet Earth, and you even if you have your whole family that loves you, you're going to be the one who needs to be connected with you. And you mm -hmm. need to be able to speak to you in a way that enhances your life. Like I have one of my clients, she was an, a provincial level cyclist, and I got her to do the best friend journal. And she said, at the end of a race before I started doing this, if I was at the end, I was not in the situation I wanted to be, I would start to beat myself up because my my coach could not always be there at the end and like so she could see her ranking go down. And once mm. she learned to become her best friend and to inspire her herself, her ranking went up. Wow. It, it, like We so often look for someone on the outside to recognize who we are and be nice to us and make us happy. Like yeah. even if you had such a person, if you don't have that own connection with yourself, it's not going to happen. So right. each and every one of us, we need to learn to be our best friend. So if your best friend had had a tough childhood, would you tell yeah. them you're such a loser? Like, well, like, look at you. Like, why should you expect to have a great life? You would never say that to your best friend. So why, right. why do we do this to ourselves? So we all yeah. need to learn to be our best friend, to inspire ourselves, to find out the why. Why am I here? Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? We need to take the time to connect with our essence, to see who we are, to can bring the best out of ourselves. Because yes. otherwise it looks like, I give you a car, I give you money for gasoline, and I give you a map, but I don't tell you where you're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go? Yeah. So most people don't even take the time to stop and ask themselves, who am I? Yeah. Why am I here? Yeah. Where am I going? What's, what's going to make me feel fulfilled? 
And then mm -hmm. they get mad because their mate or their mom or their kids don't make them happy. Nobody is in charge of making you happy. Only you can make you happy. Yes. And it's not a selfish thing to do, especially moms. Mm -hmm. Mom, like, oh, gosh. Like, no, if you're miserable because you're not connected in your heart, you're not going to be a good mom. Right. And if you love who you are, one of the things that makes you happy is to love and be loved. So you don't have to worry. It's not going to make you a selfish person to take yes. time to connect with your own heart and, and see why you're here, who you are, and learn to become your best friend. And right. that's going to heal you. That's going to increase your self-worth. And when you increase your self-worth, that worth gets reflected in all the different areas of your life. Yes, 100%. Now, you also talk about the love in your heart. A lot of people, you know, we, you know, it's, it's so important. I always feel like it's not always, it's not the brain that controls us. It's our heart. And the heart is one of the most powerful, you know, organs, parts, things in our body. And, you know, could you go into more detail why the heart is so powerful and the capability it has? Because a lot of people think, oh, it's my brain that directs me, but it's really not. It's your heart. Uh, the, the Heart Math Institute, and it's a very interesting institute. If you want, it's called the Heart Math Institute. Like there's a, the Heart Math Solution you can read. And it's an institute in the States where they're using science to prove the power of coming from the heart. Yeah. And basically, as human beings, you can live through your mind, very cerebral type of person. Then you can live through your gut, which is very emotional type of person. Or you can live through your heart, which is a wise person. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to measure the electromagnetic field of the brain, the gut, and the heart. And the electromagnetic field around the heart is more powerful than the brain or the gut. And what it does is it creates entrainment. So the more you're in your heart, the more you have, the only thing that lives in your heart is love, gratitude, inspiration, and wisdom. Love, gratitude, inspiration, and wisdom. Because those are that emotions. Like I'm here to tell you, love is not an emotion. It's your essence. It's who you are. And when you are there, you create what's called entrainment. You might have seen the experiment where you have um, how do you call that in English, uh, you know, uh, metronomes. So okay. it's like you can you can go on YouTube and say, I think they have 16 metronomes and they're all different. And all of a sudden they all start to be in, in sync. So your heart has the power to align your mind and your emotions. And once you do that through gratitude and love, you can access your genius. You gain clarity. When people tell me, I don't know why I'm here, it's because they haven't connected with their heart yet. They're not, yeah. They don't have the connection because I believe the heart connects us with our soul and our soul connects us with God. So for me, the highest form of spirituality is unconditional love for self, others, and God. And with yeah. gratitude, then you get inspiration about what you hear, which then allows you to gain wisdom, the wisdom of using your challenges to your benefit. So once you combine all of this, you got a roadmap for happiness. Yes, that's so true. That's so true. Now, I'd like to know more about your book because your book is about getting unstuck. And yeah. that's one of the things that so many people talk about. It's a very popular concept. You know, so many people feel stuck. They don't know how to move forward. They don't know how to get out of the emotions they're currently feeling that they don't want to feel. They just, you know, they're not reaching their potential. They want to be the new version of themselves, but they don't know how, you know. So tell us a little about your book and, and some of the, the theories and information to help others along the way. Yes. Um, like, like literally I've done this with thousands of people and I have two studies right now that have been done on people who've done the work with me, but I also have a peer review study. It's going to come out in September about the benefits of doing this kind of work. And basically my, my best clients are the driven people. They're driven, they're ambitious, they're courageous, and they're kind. And they feel it, they're, they're moving forward, they're striving to move forward, but like, ah, 
Mm -hmm. They feel like that thing inside of them is holding them back. There are three clues you have a subconscious belief keeping you stuck. Number one, you know what needs to be done, but you're not doing it. The famous <laughs> procrastination. And I'm here to tell you that it's not because you're lazy. It's not because you lack willpower. It's because at some level, your subconscious mind that's there to keep you alive has associated more pain than pleasure, mm. more danger than safety to something you would like to have. Mm. So for example, this is an extreme example of it. I had an Olympic level skier come to see me because she had not placed in two years. And she was frustrated, you know, if you're an athlete and you sacrifice, you don't make money as an athlete, you know, at least in Canada. <laughs> you, don't money, you don't make money, you sacrifice your social life, your love life, you're training all the time. And so she was frustrated. She knew she was capable of more, but it was just not resulting in what she wanted. Yeah. So she comes to see me and with my mind body work that I do, I test her on how I want to win. Yeah. So you would think that an Olympic level skier wants to win. Mm -hmm. But lo and behold, we found that subconsciously she didn't want to win. Why? Because when she was seven years old, she was already winning, but her brothers were not. So her mom was hiding her medals and her trophies not to make her brothers feel poorly. So now she had associated winning with making people feel poorly. So she didn't like doing this. So now mm -hmm. as an adult, your teammates, but even your competitors can feel like siblings. So Pavla Ben Pavla ben Bell rings. And now, and like like she says, at that level, a thousand of a second can mean a medal or no medal. So she was, you know, you do the wrong turn at the right time and all that stuff. And so she had two sessions with me and she ended up on the podium. And I'm using this because, you know, you can have done all the guru and you know, Tony Robbins and all in you know, and all these things. And you know exactly the recipe. You're following the recipe, but you're not getting the cake. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's not because you were born under an unlucky star it's just because your subconscious mind that's there to keep you alive thinks it's not safe for you right because relatively speaking your consciousness that wants a thing is the size of a football and your subconscious mind that's there to keep you alive it's not your enemy it's just trying to protect you it's this football field mm-hmm Imagine how much might you need to have to keep going, even though your subconscious mind goes, uh uh, not good for you. All right, so that's clue number one. Num clue number two, you do what needs to be done, but it's uses so much more energy. You have a report that should take 20 minutes, but instead it's taking you three hours. All of a sudden you're hungry or you need to go vacuum or you need to go on your social media. You know, things happen and it's, oh, you keep <laughs> doing it. But, oh, it uses all your might. Yeah. Number three, and that's the one that frustrates my most driven client the most is, Again, you follow the recipe, you do everything right, but you get the opposite result. Mm. But you're super driven, so you keep, you know, falling down, pulling yourself back up. You fall down, and it's like, ah, oh, but what's wrong? Something must be wrong with me because I'm not, I'm following the recipe, but I'm not getting the cake. What's wrong with me? And that's so frustrating. I am here to tell you, if you're listening to this and this is your situation, it's not because you're not meant to have what you want. It's just because without your awareness, there's a story right now holding you back. So that's that's the good news is I, I really know, I don't believe, I know that if you have something in your heart, you're meant to have it. You yeah. just need to make sure that you pay attention to your conscious thoughts about it, but also learn to do the subconscious work because it blows people's mind when they discover, like her, you know, she could never have imagined that winning medals when she was a kid was the reason why she was not winning. That's what right. she said. Like, 
She says, and I, lot, I got a lot luckier after I worked with Lise. She ended up retiring third in the world in, in, her, in her discipline. So it, wow. the good news, and this is what I want to give right now. I want to give people the joy of knowing that if you're willing to challenge yourself and do the work, you can have everything because you at the core are love. You are worthy of love. And mm -hmm. every single thing that ever happened was happening for you, not to you, for you to grow in love and wisdom. Yes. And if you I... love yourself enough to listen to your heart and give your heart what it wants, you're going to create heaven on earth. That's yes. all you need to do. Learn to use your boot camp to your advantage. Let go of the story you created as a result and benefit from everything that's ever happened to grow in love and wisdom. And you are, that's why I love speaking with you, because you are a perfect example of this. You transcended this. And now millions of people are inspired by you. And that's like each and every listener right now, there is a story, something that's happened to you. And if you start using it to advantage, you're going to heal your own heart, but you're also going to transform the lives of people around you. They're going to go, oh, wow, look at Jane, look at Joe, look at them, like what they went through and like, wow, look at what they're doing. Hmm, maybe, maybe I can start doing something similar. And that's how we can transform the world. Right. Isn't it amazing how... You know, a lot of things transcend into from our childhood years, you know, the simplest things, we might not even be aware of it, like that, that athlete that you were talking about, she had no idea that, you know, her childhood years when her mother made her hide the medals was the reason why she wasn't excelling in her adult years, you know, but a lot of times the root cause of many things seem to be from their childhood and a lot of it's in their subconscious it seems and you, until you do the the work you know a, a lot of times people don't realize what's holding them back and making them stuck what's your intake on that yeah and that's why you need to be highly aware of the three clues you have a subconscious belief working against you so remember it number one procrastination number mm -hmm. two you can see yourself not being focused and you use a lot more energy than you need. Number three, you keep getting the opposite results. So if you see yourself with those one of those three mechanism in place, and sometimes it's all three, <laughs> just, know that it, just know that there's a solution and it's learning how to do the heart freedom method. I have an online course. It's called Get Unstuck with Dr. Lee. So you can learn how to do it for yourself or you can coach with me or you can coach with one of my coaches because I train coaches in doing this work but give yourself the gift of giving your heart what it wants because otherwise it's like if you're speaking to me and while you're speaking to me I look away mm -hmm. you look at a cocktail party where that happens you start speaking and people are looking away mm -hmm. well when your heart is speaking to you and you're not listening, you feel the same way. You feel unloved. That's like, if you were in a long-term relationship with someone and when you speak to them, they don't pay attention to you, you would feel depressed after a while. And this is why a lot of people are depressed is because their heart is speaking to them and they're not listening. Mm -hmm. but let's say while we speak together, you tell me you like Thai food. And mm -hmm. next time I make a reservation at the restaurant, I make it a Thai restaurant. You would come there and feel like, wow, not yeah. only did she listen to me, but she did something for me. Right. So if you want to live an amazing life, you want to transform your life first, you need to do whatever it takes to let go of any illusion that something is wrong with you because you are love. You are love. That's, that's who you are. And the second thing you need to do, and that's really scary, is to admit your dreams and aspirations because what if I admit that I want to be an Olympic level skier? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's scary. I have to work hard. I need to face myself. Like, what if I don't win? So most of the time, people don't admit what they really want because what if I don't get what I want? Yes. Because I'm unworthy. So we create these stories. And right now, if you tell me that Stacey, you want to be a prima ballerina? I would say, I don't 
think that's your heart. Yeah. I don't think that's your heart. And that's why we need to be clear because the difference between infatuation with an idea, you know, you see the Kardashians or whatever, and you look at these people and you think, oh, I want to be just like them. Is that really your heart speaking? Or is mm -hmm. that your infatuation? Trying right. to compensate for how inadequate you are by trying to do these things. No, yeah. when something comes directly from your heart and you admit it, that's when you trans, that's when you're creating heaven on earth. That's a stage two living. That's why I say my ideal client is driven, courageous, and kind. And mm -hmm. I like the word courageous. You speak Greek, so you have connection with Greek, but the Latin connection to courageous is the French word cœur, mm -hmm. which is French for heart. So yes. if you want to live an amazing life, you need to come from the heart. And when you face a challenge, you need to go, all right, 30 seconds of courage. Before you, I was doing a group coaching call and there was this young girl, she popped up on the screen and her mom was sharing how you know, she'd been homeschooling her kid and now all of a sudden she's like six, seven years old and she's thinking she wants to go to school with other kids and that's out of her comfort zone. And she, but she thinks she really needs to do it. And I go, yeah, because every time you're courageous, you have the capacity at that moment to feel like Rocky, you know? Go, ta -da -ta, ta -da -ta. I had this <laughs> I went through it and now you feel like wow this is super amazing I can't do anything there's a movie out there and it's called it's an old movie it's called uh, Honey we, we Bought a Zoo and basically <laughs> the only thing I really remember from the movie is that at one point the guy is walking on the sidewalk and he looks into a rest the restaurant and you see this beautiful woman and you go, whoa, you know, she's out of my league, but for some reason, like he's scared, but he's gonna go in. And so he goes in, he speaks with her, and he ends up marrying her. Like often decisions in our life are pivots like this. Like your heart calls you to do something, you're scared. You know it'd be scary, but your heart says, No, this is what your heart wants. And yeah. if you go for it you're going to learn so many things that are going to bring so much joy in your life and that we yeah. owe it to ourselves to spend time to ask ourselves who am i why am i here where am i going because that's how you're going to make yourself live a great life and when you do that you increase your vitality your self-worth everything matches that right oh yes 100 percent now, if you had to tell the listeners, um, if you wanted to like look at a couple of things that you think will have a, a huge impact on the way that listeners will, you know, maybe um, change their lives and maybe focus on different different behaviors or different ways of doing things, what are some things you'd like to emphasize from our conversation today that you feel are really important that people should really take into consideration if they want to become unstuck and happy? Yeah. So the first thing is when you feel you face a challenge, take a deep breath in and say, okay, since I'm worthy of love, how am I going to use what's happening to my advantage? Mm -hmm. Because there's only two reasons why you face a challenge. Number one, it's guiding you to master something that obviously you have not mastered because if you had mastered it, it wouldn't be a problem. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. And or this challenge is guiding you to go somewhere that you either unaware of that you need to go. Like for me, I told you about my father, my brother, and my relationship. I had no idea why this was happening. Right. And it's really scary when these moments happen. But if you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're worthy of love. And what I did to survive the pain is I went on a quest to understand what it takes. So it propulsed me into a direction that I'm sitting in front of you right now because I use this challenge for my benefit. So even though you don't understand why it's happening, if you are using it as a driver 
it will get you somewhere. And sometimes you actually know that you need to do that thing, but you're not doing it. That's why you're attracting the challenge. For example, for me, uh, in 2003, I was still a chiropractor and I'd be standing behind my patients and all of a sudden I'd be quiet. <laughs> I took my girlfriend out for her birthday dinner and right in the middle of the birthday dinner, I started crying. I was like, ah. so then I stopped and I went, okay, why is this happening? Then I realized it's because I was staying in my comfort zone. Mm. I love being a chiropractor. I was quite successful, but my heart was calling me to become a coach to do what I'm now doing. So when you face a challenge, take a deep breath in. Since I'm worthy of love, what is this guiding me to do? What, what am I supposed to master? Mm. And or where is this sending me that I either know I need to go, but I'm resisting it or I have no clue. And this is when you really need to know you're worthy of love. This is where you need self-esteem and you go, okay, let's say you get diagnosed with cancer or something really scary. Your spouse dies, like something overwhelming. Yeah. Just take a breath and go, since I'm worthy of love, what is this guiding me to do to survive the pain? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be guided to listen to podcasts or to read some books or to connect with people. And as you follow the journey, it's going to lead you somewhere that you would have never imagined being able to go. Like your story is amazing for that. You're a prime example of that. So when you face a challenge, take a deep breath. Since I'm worthy of love, how am I going to use this to my advantage? The second thing is, yeah, become your best friend. Like download the best friend journal mm -hmm. and become your best friend because that's how you're going to create true joy and happiness in your life. I love it. I love it. Now you talked about some of the services already that you provide. Can you just go over again the different services again that you provide? Yeah, with pleasure. Um, actually, the last weekend of September, this September, uh, I have my Extreme Freedom Weekend, which is what got me to transform my life from being a chiropractor to becoming a coach, where I teach you how to find gratitude for even the most challenging moment of your life, but also where we spend a whole day looking at you and your purpose. What is my purpose? So you gain clarity. So that's one that can be super powerful. The other yes. thing I can recommend is my Get Unstuck Online program where I teach you how to do the heart freedom method. Where, so you'll find the stories that are holding you back. If you do those two basic things, if you combine those two things together, like you're going to be unstoppable. And if you mm -hmm. want to go deeper, then you can do coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or one of my coaches. And uh, you can learn how to do a certification. So these, these are the main things I could recommend. I also have, because I love things about love, I have a soul worthy <laughs> love program where I teach people how to find true love so that they experience the bliss of having true love in their life. Oh, I love that. Now, your book has not yet been um, put on the bookshelves yet, but it's about to be launched. Can you tell us a little about when we should expect it and where we can find it? Yes, um, it's going to be for sure. It's going to be on Amazon and it's going to be next year. I, In the meantime, I have another book I've written. It's called Conversation with the Heart. So you can oh. go on conversationwiththeheart.com. And you can either download it or order it as a hard copy. I also have as an audio. And it will it will help you get inspired and connect with your heart. So that's one. The one with Jack is going to be called Unstuck. And um, hopefully in the spring, we'll have access to it. And maybe I can come back and talk some more with it. And maybe Jack and I can come on the, on the podcast and talk about it. I would love that. I would love that. You know, where can people also find your website before we go? I want people to know where they can go to see you. Thanks. Um, I have drlegionelle.com or heartfreedommethod.com. Those two websites are tons of information and you can learn a lot, even if you don't want to purchase anything. And if you go there, you can be inspired. There's tons of information that can really help you. 
Love it. I love it. This has truly been amazing. Dr. Lise, I am so honored to have you on the show. This, this conversation has been extraordinary. I have re received so much valuable information from our conversation. You are just a truly amazing woman. And I have to commend you also for everything you've been through. You have overcome it all. And not only did you overcome it, but you used it for the greater good. And that is hard for many people to do. And you were able to take your obstacles, learn from them, overcome them, and now you help others do the same. So I, I give you kudos. I give you lots of love and hugs and kisses. And I just thank you so much because there's so many people out there that need to hear what you have to say because they're struggling and they need to learn how to get unstuck. They need to learn how to feel happiness and joy. And, you know, sometimes when obstacles come our way, a lot of people tend to give up and they become very depressed and they just, they just get stuck. And you, you know, used your obstacles to teach others. So thank you so much. I am honored to have you on the show. I am honored to be here in your presence. So, and to listen to your wonderful, valuable advice. And I thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you for following your heart and impacting the world. Thank you. Thank you. And you have a great day. You too. Bye everyone. Enjoy your day. <laughs> <laughs>